sunshine and glamour of South America, the start of a new Formula One season, we're in Brazil for round one of the series, with Brazil's favourite son Ayrton Senna in the Williams Renault this year, on pole position, and that's obviously a delight to the Brazilian crowd. But alongside Senna on the front row of the grid, it's the German Michael Schumacher in the Benetton Ford, and as the lights go green, watch the Ferrari of Jean Alesi come through from third spot on the grid to take second place ahead of the Benetton. So it's Senna Williams first, a lazy Ferrari second, and Michael Schumacher in the Benetton third. Damon Hill is fourth in the Williams Renault, fifth in his first Grand Prix, Heinz Harold Frensen in the Sauber, and in sixth place, Mika Hakkinen's McLaren. And as the rest of the field funnel through, Ayrton Senna already pulling out a big lead. Schumacher challenges the Ferrari for second place, gets past, but Jean Alesi fights back. The battle for second place goes on, but on the next lap, Michael Schumacher gets it together and demotes the Ferrari finally to third place. Time for the first pit stops, and Senna and Schumacher come in at the same time. The Benetton pit is in front of the Williams pit, and the Benetton pit work is absolutely superb. As the Williams team finish their work, already the Benetton is on the move, and Michael Schumacher has the lead. Back on the circuit, Schumacher starts to pull away from the Williams. Senna struggles on in second place. Lap 35, Eddie Irvine's Jordan and Jos Verstappen's Benetton collide as they fight for eighth place. They collect Martin Brundle's McLaren. Nobody is hurt, but Eddie Irvine will earn a three-race suspension for this accident. 15 laps to go, Senna's closing on Schumacher, but this rare mistake puts him out of the race. The crowd are dismayed, and they start to leave already. Schumacher gets the news with a pit signal, and goes on to win by a complete lap from Damon Hills Williams. Charles Lacy's Ferrari is third, the Schumacher fans are delighted, and the story of the season is already in place. Race two is Japan and the new Pacific Grand Prix at Aida. The track is isolated, the crowd has to be bussed into the race, but as always in Japan, there are an awful lot of them. Oriental glamour is much in evidence. And once again, Ayrton Senna is the darling of the crowd. Once again, he's on pole position. Sean Alesi has hurt his neck in testing, so Nicola Marini is in the cockpit of his Ferrari. This time, Michael Schumacher outdrags Senna into the first corner with a superb start. Hakkinen's McLaren is third, and Hakkinen taps the back of Senna's car, spins it round, Senna is off, and Nicola Marini T-bones the Williams. Mark Blandell is also out in the Tyrrell. So Michael Schumacher moves ahead, Mika Hakkinen is second, and look at the nose of the McLaren for the telltale black mark from Senna's rear tyre. Damon Hill is third, and as Ayrton Senna walks back, Damon attacks Hakkinen, but comes off second best. He drops six places to ninth. Nicola Larini explains what happened, and Damon Hill starts a tremendous drive back up the field, passing cars left and right. His efforts get him as far as second place, a tremendous effort, but the transmission of the Williams cries enough. And after all his hard work, his race comes to an end with no championship points as a reward. Schumacher's pit stops go smoothly, and he manages to maintain the lead throughout. He's especially determined passing the back markers. Martin Brundle has got as far as third place, but he's furious hitting the McLaren when the engine cries enough. And Jos Verstappen is a bit enthusiastic coming out of the pits. He was in fourth place, but now he's out, and not everybody is upset about this. So, another tremendous win for Michael Schumacher. The chequered flag makes it two out of two for the German. 
and Rubens Barrichello is delighted to have his and Jordan's first podium in third place behind the Ferrari of Gerhard Berger. The champagne is sprayed and already Schumacher is thinking about a world title. So to Europe, to Italy, to Imola and the home of Ferrari, the home also of the most enthusiastic motor racing fans in the world particularly if they've got Ferraris and Ferrari flags to cheer with. JJ Leighton back in the second Benetton having recovered from his testing injuries. But in qualifying came tragedy. Rubens Barrichello had a huge accident on Friday, but was only slightly hurt. But on Saturday came this accident to the young Austrian, Roland Ratzenberger. He didn't survive this crash, and it was the first death in Grand Prix racing since 1982. On Sunday morning, the drivers held a meeting about safety. Ayrton Senna as the acknowledged leader of Formula One, the prime mover. At the start of the race, at the green light, JJ Leto stalled his Benetton. Everybody avoided him except Pedro Lamy, whose Lotus hit him hard. Two wheels flew over the safety fence into the crowd. No driver was injured, but spectators were hurt. The safety car came out for five laps, with Senna and Michael Schumacher following it. Then, as the safety car pulled off, the race was on, with Ayrton Senna and Michael Schumacher fighting over the lead. On the next lap at Tamburello, Senna's Williams inexplicably veered to the right. He hit the bank with horrifying force. As the field moved through the wreckage, out came the red flag and the race was stopped. And the drivers heard the news that Ayrton Senna was critically injured. After an agonizing pause, the field lined up again for the restart. And it was the Ferrari of Gerhard Berger that took the lead on the road. Michael Schumacher, actually leading the race on aggregate, fought with Berger for the lead, challenging him one side then the other. But to the delight of the Italian crowd, it was still a Ferrari in front. Damon Hill attacked Schumacher, but his nose cone came off worst. Then a small mistake by Gerhard Berger coming out of Aqua Minerale gave Schumacher the chance that he needed, and he put the Benetton ahead on the road as well as on aggregate. Damon Hill needed a pit stop for a new nose section, and he dropped from third on the road all the way down to 19th. Then Gerhard Berger decided to call it a day. Michael Schumacher, after his pit stop, had Nicola Larini and the other Ferrari to pass. One more drama on this horrifying weekend, Michele Alboreto's Minardi loses a rear wheel after a pit stop and several mechanics are hurt by the flying wheel. So the third chequered flag for Michael Schumacher, but it's an unhappy day. The only thing I can say about this is I hope we learn from this. I think there is a lot to learn from, and we have to use this, and things like this, they shouldn't happen without taking the experience from it. Despite the grief, Monaco is its usual glamorous self two weeks later, with the expensive cars parked in the casino square in front of the Hotel de Paris. But there's near tragedy in first practice. On Thursday morning, Carl Wendlinger has an accident in his Sauber and he's in a coma for 19 days before he makes a complete recovery. Before the race, there is a tribute to Ayrton Senna and Roland Ratzenberger, and the front two places on the starting grid are left free in their memory. At the start, Schumacher is on his own, but Mika Hakkinen in second place is hit from behind by Damon Hill. Hakkinen is out, Hill is soon to retire. This is Hakkinen's view of it. 
Hakkinen is extremely unhappy and doesn't like the attentions of the marshal. Damon Hill is furious. So Schumacher runs away with the Monaco Grand Prix on his own and out in front. But the Ferraris are showing well. Berger is second, Alesi is third. Schumacher's worst moment comes when Blundell's Tyrrell blows up in front of him. He almost goes off on the oil at saint de -Vote. Blundell is out for good. And then Berger gets on the oil. He spins right round, stays away from the barriers and does a neat three-way turn to get back onto the track. But his tyres are dirty, his second place is threatened by a fast approaching Martin Brundle in the McLaren. They go up the hill and Martin Brundle's looking for a place to pounce. Overtaking's not easy around the tight streets of Monaco, but Brundle executes a magnificent move, going down the hill to Mirabeau. So Schumacher on his way to a superb victory. The chequered flag awaits him. Brundle is a magnificent second and Berger is third and Flavio Briatore does his own victory dance with the winner. But you can see the strain in Gerhard Berger's face. The grief of Senna's death isn't far away. Round five is Barcelona. There's been a long debate about the safety of the track and motivated largely by Gerhard Berger, there's a new chicane, which Berger isn't used to yet. Schumacher is on pole position again. Damon Hill joins him on the front row and Eddie Irvine is back after his three race ban. As the lights go green, it's a real traffic jam down to the first corner. They're five abreast, but Schumacher is in front, Damon is second, Hakkinen is there with him, and further back there's a little argument between Barrichello and Berger. Barrichello gets through, Berger's on the grass, but Schumacher, through the chicane, is well in front. Williams' new boy David Coulthard is an excellent fifth until his car develops a problem in the pit stop. He does get back into the race, he's a lap behind, just as Schumacher and Hakkinen fight over the lead. Schumacher has a gear selection problem and Hakkinen is able to take the McLaren past. Schumacher's stuck in gear, as you can hear from the cockpit. But Damon Hill has all his gears and he's catching fast. After the pit stops, it's Hill leading. It's Schumacher second, it's Hakkinen closing fast in third, but Hakkinen's engine cries enough. He's not the only McLaren Peugeot driver in trouble because Martin Brundle, up to third place as a result, has a similar problem. So Damon Hill goes on his way to victory. It's a tremendously important win for the Williams team. And his engineer, John Russell, is overcome. So is Adrian Newey, the designer. It's been the first Williams win for a long time. And they're back on track. Schumacher, nevertheless, manages to come home in second place despite his problems. And Mark Blundell gives Tyrrell Yamaha their first podium finish in third place. Five races gone, 46 points to Schumacher, 17 to Damon Hill. As the teams go to Canada, the battle is developing. On the picturesque Ile Notre Dame circuit, Schumacher has his third pole position. But the Ferraris are going well here. And behind Schumacher, it's Ferrari's second and third on the grid. As the lights go green, Schumacher takes his lead, followed by the Ferraris. But David Coulthard makes a better start than Damon Hill, and he's in fourth ahead of Hill. Damon Hill's not at all happy about this. As the Ferraris get away, he attacks Coulthard, but Coulthard isn't going to make it easy for him at this stage. 
This isn't good news for Damon because all this time Michael Schumacher is easing away from him and there are two Ferraris between him and the leader and that's the man that he needs to challenge for those crucial championship points. Schumacher easing away into another comfortable lead. Finally a little wave of Coulthard's right hand allows Damon to go through. And as soon as he's by, Damon shows that overtaking a Ferrari isn't quite that difficult, as he sorts out Gerhard Berger with a confident move. Meanwhile, there's quite a queue behind David Coulthard. Rubens Barrichello tries to get by and does as Coulthard makes a mistake, but he still manages to shut the door on Mika Hakkinen. And while all this wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff is going on, the Canadian weather deals another wild card. There's a sudden shower of rain. Everyone on slicks, and Damon Hill has a very nasty moment when the Tyrrell of Ukio Katayama spins right in front of him. Hill avoids the stricken Tyrrell, and Katayama manages to get pointing the right way again with a neat manoeuvre. Mika Hakkinen, out of luck yet again, yet another blown engine in the back of the McLaren. And so Schumacher goes on his triumphant way, with the lapped David Coulthard running behind him. Damon Hill is a distant second this time, with Jean Lazy's Ferrari third. Once again, there are celebrations in the Benetton pit. And on the podium, as Michael Schumacher counts up those lovely championship points. Now it's back to Europe again and the French Grand Prix, and another man who's crossed the Atlantic is Nigel Mansell. I think, first of all, what I'd like to say is, um, is congratulate the Newman Haas team, uh, obviously the Williams team, but also uh, Formula One Supremo uh, Bernie Eccleston for making this weekend happen. Um, I wasn't privy to the, uh, the meetings, but I think everybody would agree that uh, it's quite sensational what's uh, happened to actually get me here for this guest appearance. Well, Damon Hill makes the point. He's quicker than Nigel Mansell in qualifying. He has his first pole position of the season. But at the start, Michael Schumacher fans further controversy about the starting ability of the Benetton by catapulting past both the Williamses and being clearly in the lead by the first corner. Hill is second, Mansell is third, with the Ferraris of Alesi and Berger fourth and fifth. But Schumacher already looks as though he's dominating the race. Schumacher stays ahead until his first pit stop. It's a quick one, but it allows Damon Hill to go by into the lead. And Zanardi opens another chapter in the unhappy year for Lotus with an expensive engine blower. The man with the fire extinguisher is looking forward to putting his equipment to use. Damon Hill has the lead after Schumacher's pit stop, but not for long. Schumacher's right on his tail, and as Hill comes in for his stop, Schumacher's back in a lead that he will not lose today. In goes Damon Hill's fuel. It's a quick stop, but he knows he's demoted to second place. Yet another McLaren Peugeot blow up for poor Mika Hacken. This is becoming a habit. And Jean Lazy gets it very wrong when he spins out of fourth place keeps the car running and comes back onto the circuit right in front of fifth man Rubens Barrichello. Both of them are out of the race. Both of them are very unhappy. So is Nigel Mansell. He can't get any gears. So yet another win for Michael Schumacher. Damon Hill is second, a lazy third, but Damon can't quite understand how Schumacher was able to make that quite extraordinary start.
I made the second best start I think I've made all year. Uh, I was pretty pleased with the start, and it just beat me to the uh, the first corner. I mean, it was it was going past me at a hell of a rate. On to the corporate hospitality and the helicopters of Silverstone. And here on his home ground, the big hero is Damon Hill. And he added to his reputation by taking pole position by three thousandths of a second from Michael Schumacher. As the cars go off on their warm-up lap, unaccountably, Schumacher out-accelerates Hill, the pole position man, and goes ahead of him. Hill goes back in front to take up his rightful place, and then Schumacher does it again. So to the start, and this time, Damon Hill gets it absolutely right. But there's more fire from a McLaren. This time, it's Martin Brundle whose engines blow. As Damon Hill rockets away in the lead, pursued by Schumacher and Gerhard Berger's Ferrari, let's look again at the start and watch Mark Blundell drive round the drama. So, Damon Hill leads, Michael Schumacher is second, and the crowd are absolutely going mad for Damon Hill. He seems today to be vanquishing Schumacher. But after the first stops, it's Schumacher back in front. The tension in the pits is clear, with Damon's wife Georgie and Frank Williams' wife Ginny wondering what the outcome will be. Schumacher goes on in the lead, but the officials haven't liked his behaviour on the warm-up lap. They give him the black flag. There's a row now between Tom Walkinshaw of Benetton and race director Roland Brunserade. The Benetton pit do bring Schumacher in for his five-second stop-go penalty. And as he rockets away, Damon Hill, of course, is now back into the lead. Michael Schumacher demoted to second, and his task seems impossible. But Gerhard Berger in third place has to call it a day with another Ferrari retirement. So Damon Hill comes victoriously home ahead of a lapped David Coulthard, and 16 seconds behind, it's Michael Schumacher. And the battle for fourth place is resolved like this, as Hakkinen and Barrichello collide. Hakkinen is stuck and can't restart, but Barrichello, not realising it's the last lap, drives into the pits, throwing away fourth place, because Hakkinen, with the help of the marshals, is able to restart and struggle over the line. A very unhappy Michael Schumacher is second on the road, but will later be disqualified. Damon Hill gets the spoils of victory from the Princess of Wales. For him, it's been a great home victory. I feel... Absolutely superb. I think this is the best day of my life. I just can't, it's like a dream. I want to thank everyone at Williams who have gone through misery this year. And it's been a very tough year. I want to thank everyone at Williams for getting behind me and making this possible. So to Germany, Michael Schumacher has a two-race ban for ignoring the black flag at Silverstone, but he will race here under appeal at his home Grand Prix, to the relief of the German fans. On points, the corrected position is that Schumacher still leads, but now by just 27 points, as the field go round on their final warm-up lap for the German Grand Prix. It's been a great qualifying for Ferrari. On pole position, it's Gerhard Berger, who was using the tremendous power of the 12 cylinder Ferrari on Hockenheim's long straights to the best. A very happy man is Gerhard. But it could have been Jean Lazy on pole if this hadn't happened in qualifying. Here's a Lazy on his quickest lap. So, no engine cover for a Lazy, no pole position but he's still starting on the front row in the barriers. There the marshals clearing the wreckage, and Damon Hill hits the back of Katayama and damages his suspension. So as Berger and Schumacher lead, both of the Williamses are damaged. Coulthard's front wing is at a drunken angle. 
and Damon Hill is slowing with his suspension problem. Both of them are on their way to the pits. In comes Coulthard for a new front nose section. Damon Hill's waiting behind for attention. And out in front, Ferrari versus Benetton battle on for the lead. But Gerhard Berger always manages to stay in front of Michael Schumacher. The power of the Ferrari is what tells on the fast straights of Hockenheim. This is Verstappen's stop for Benetton. Watch the fuel hose. Out comes the fuel, the fuel's all over mechanics and car, and it bursts into flame. Several of the mechanics are slightly burnt. Verstappen is still inside the car but they get the fire out very, very quickly. It could have been so much worse. Gerhard Berger's out on his own now because Michael Schumacher's made his routine stop. And then Schumacher's back in again with engine failure. His home Grand Prix and it's come to naught. All of this has promoted Olivier Parnis to a remarkable second place. But in the Ferrari pit, Niki Lauda, Jean Alesi and Jean Todt cheer for the first Ferrari Grand Prix win in four years as Gerhard Berger takes the flag and we have the Italian national anthem. Ligier's second and third, a surprising race in Germany. So to Hungary. And there's no Mika Hakkinen at the Hungaro ring. He's had a one-race ban because of his part in the Hockenheim start line shunt. And Philip Alio is in his car. And Michael Schumacher is back on pole position, with Damon Hill and David Coulthard second and third in the Williamses, and Gerhard Berger fourth. But watch Olivier Parnis jump the start in the Ligier before he gets bogged down in the traffic. Hill makes a good start and leads into the first corner, but Schumacher goes round the outside of him, giving Hill quite a shock as they go downhill into the second corner. And then a big twitch for Schumacher, and he holds it on the road and holds the lead. Already both Jordans and Ukio Katayama are out, and Schumacher starts to build his lead once more. Damon Hill in second place, and David Coulthard leading the pursuit. Coulthard hasn't had a podium finish yet, but as Schumacher and Hill race away, Coulthard holds a solid third place until this happens. Coulthard out of the race, no podium finish for him today. But Schumacher, well in the lead, finds himself lapping his teammate Jos Verstappen. And rather ingeniously, he works out that history might be better if he lets Verstappen go past to unlap himself. And the battle between Marc Blundell and Olivier Panis rages on for fifth place. Ahead of them is the other Ligier, a lap down, that's Eric Bernard, wondering if he can help his teammate in any way. But in fact, Blundell's got the matter under control and Parnis is held down in sixth place. In third place was Martin Brundle's McLaren, but he expires on the final lap. And that means that as Michael Schumacher comes home to get the spoils of victory, Flavio Briatore is wondering whether he is going to have third place as well. He congratulates second man Damon Hill and waits. And sure enough, in comes the second Benetton with Jos Verstappen at the wheel to get his first ever podium finish. 10 points for Schumacher, six for Hill, and here's the young Dutchman with four points and a podium finish. Belgium, sunshine. Still memories of Ayrton Senna, but it may be sunshine on Sunday, but it rained on Friday and Saturday, and it was this man, Rubens Barrichello, with Eddie Jordan's Jordan Hart, who was able to choose precisely the right moment to go out on a damp road on slicks and get his first pole position. At the start, he's very determined to shut out Michael Schumacher and hangs on to the lead as they go into the hairpin after the start. Jean Alesi elbows his way past Damon Hill and Eddie Irvine to slot into third place in the Ferrari as the field go downhill to the remodelled Eau Rouge corner. This year, a tight chicane. So Barrichello still leads as they go on up the hill. 
Schumacher, Alesi and Damon Hill follow. Up to the top of the hill, Schumacher is determined to challenge Barrichello. And without difficulty, he goes past at the top. But Jean Alesi's race does not last long. Once again, his luck is out. With a sick engine, he comes frustratedly to a halt. And sits to ponder his luck by the side of the road. So Schumacher, now clear of the lead, makes a rare mistake, gathers it all together. He's spun across the kerbs, but has done his 360 degrees without losing the lead. And David Coulthard, after the pit stops, is now ahead of Damon Hill and holding second place. Rubens Barrichello, the pole position man, is running a one pit stop strategy. And with a full load of fuel, he's down in fifth place when, as he laps David Brabham, it all goes wrong. He runs wide, and the barrier beckons. So Barrichello's day of glory is not today. But David Coulthard is brought in with a loose rear wing, and Patrick Head looks to see whether the car is safe. He decides it is, and sends Coulthard back out again. But that's promoted Damon Hill to a safe second place, Mika Hakkinen is third, and Michael Schumacher is on the top of the podium. What they don't know is that in post-race scrutineering, Schumacher's car will be found to be illegal. The plank underneath the car is too shallow. He's disqualified. He's not at Monza either, because he's now started to serve the two-race ban that is the result of the black flag incident at Silverstone. Here, Sylvester Stallone, the film star, talks to Damon Hill, the motor racing star. Ferrari are the real stars here for the Italian crowd. Gerhard Berger and Jean Alesi once more on the front row of the grid. Johnny Herbert is in a magnificent fourth on the grid, and he out-accelerates Damon Hill to take third place for Lotus as they go down to the first corner. But Eddie Irvine locks up behind him and hits him from behind, spins him round, there's a multiple pile-up, and inevitably, the race is going to have to be stopped. At least seven cars are crippled, and so, as the red flag comes out, we can look at Coulthard's eye view of Eddie Irvine hitting the Lotus. And Coulthard himself is spun round. At the restart, Johnny Herbert has to start from the pits in the old engine Lotus. Still the Ferraris get away first and second, but Damon Hill is challenging on the outside. He doesn't quite make it, however, and here in Italy, Ferraris are first and second, Williams are third and fourth, and Hakkinen's McLaren is fifth. There's another moment on the first lap as Morbidelli collides with Zanardi, and Morbidelli ends up in the barriers. Jean Alesi wants to make no mistakes today. He pulls out at almost a second a lap, while Gerhard Berger has the task of keeping Hill and Coulthard in the Williamses behind. Johnny Herbert's unlucky day ends with another failure. Now here's Alesi in the pits, he's well in the lead, it's all going well, but the car won't engage a gear. He can't make the car select a gear. He shakes his head in disbelief, The Ferrari mechanics work on the car, but it's no good. And a distraught Alesi strides away from the car. Gerhard Berger takes over the lead, but he's unlucky with his pit stop. It all goes well as the Ferrari mechanics work, but watch the man with the lollipop who has to hold Berger in position when Berger wants to leave because there's a Ligier coming in. Collision is narrowly avoided, but Berger's long stop means that into the lead has gone Damon Hill, into second place is David Coulthard, but on the final run, down to the final corner, Coulthard's car falters, he's running out of petrol, and the Ferrari is ready to pounce. Berger goes by into second place. Hill wins the race. The Ferrari will be second, 
and poor David Coulthard can't even struggle to the finish line. And Mika Hakkinen is a lucky third. In the next round in Portugal, Schumacher is serving the second part of his bat. But the tension is showing with Damon Hill. He knows he must win this race as he talks to David Brown, his engineer. But it's Gerhard Berger who gets pole. Damon is second quickest, Coulthard third, and at the start, Coulthard makes a better start than him. Hill is third, a lazy fourth, and Mika Hakkinen, we're riding with him now, is fifth as Rubens Barrichello goes round the outside of Frentzen for sixth place. The two Williamses are sandwiched between the two Ferraris. Gerhard Berger hangs on to the lead, Coulthard hangs on to second place ahead of Damon Hill. But Gerhard Berger's luck is not going to last long. He seems to be easing away quite comfortably, but then a shortage of gears in the transmission of the Ferrari slows him to a halt. The Williamses go by, David Coulthard leads, Damon Hill is second. Coulthard even seems to be building his lead a little bit over Damon Hill. But then Damon Hill settles into the groove and decides to attack as they come up to lap Eric Comas in the LaRousse. Damon sneaks inside, locking up a wheel, and Coulthard has to give best. Now Damon Hill has the lead. It's running to the script. And he knows that this race that he has to win is coming into his grasp. Jean Alesi has a misunderstanding with David Brabham when he laps him, and the Ferrari goes bouncing into retirement. So Mika Hakkinen is third, and for the third time in a row, he's going to put the McLaren Peugeot on the podium. David Coulthard closes up to Hill again, and Williams have a 1-2, crossing the finish line in formation. Another important victory for the Didcot team in this so difficult year and the joy shows in the faces of all the team, but particularly in Damon Hill's face. Absolutely, completely and utterly delighted because I knew that we had a good car here and a good engine and the whole package was good, but you're asking a lot from reliability and, and all the luck factors that uh, can't be accounted for. And uh, so it's a big relief. So they go to the final European round, the European Grand Prix in Jerez, one point apart. Schumacher leads by one point, and Damon Hill has a new teammate again. Nigel Mansell is back, but so, of course, is Michael Schumacher. One point apart, the World Championship battle is on, with three races to go. Schumacher's on pole position once more, ahead of the two Williamses. But at the green light, Damon Hill makes a magnificent start out accelerates the Benetton and leads Schumacher into the first corner. Heinz Harold Frensen has the Sauber up into third place, ahead of Gerhard Berger, Rubens Barrichello and Nigel Mansell, who's dropped to sixth. This leading gaggle rush away, but it's the leading pair who have broken free. Damon Hill holding the lead in this race, which is crucial to the championship. Michael Schumacher playing a waiting game in second place. Heinz Harold Frensen is third with a queue behind him. Mansell gets past Gerhard Berger and then past Rubens Barrichello to take fourth place. Martin Brundle's race is run in the McLaren, another smoky retirement. And then as Mansell is chasing Frensen, he hits the back of Hideki Noda as the Japanese is slowing to go into the pits. The front of the Williams is damaged. Rubens Barrichello goes past again. In comes Schumacher for the first routine stop. He's going to make three, Damon Hill two. And then Nigel Mansell down in 15th place puts the Williams in the gravel. He's out of his return Grand Prix. He just put a wheel wide on the curb and that was the end. Schumacher is leading comfortably now, although he has a little trouble lapping Mika Hakkinen. Damon Hill's pit stop strategy has gone wrong. In one of its stops, the Williams has taken on too little fuel, which means it has to run the last section of the race with too much. 
and that helps Schumacher to build a dominating lead and take his eighth victory of the year. Damon Hill is a distant second and Mika Hakkinen third. The gap between them now is five points. It's starting to look good again for Schumacher and the disappointment shows in Damon Hill's face as he and Schumacher greet each other rather perfunctorily after the race. Then the long trek to Japan to the penultimate round at Suzuka and race day is wet. Michael Schumacher is on pole yet again. Damon Hill second quickest and the conditions are going to be truly treacherous. Damon has a big task today but as the lights go green and the field go off into the murk Schumacher once more establishes himself at the head of the field and Heinz Harold Frensen makes a magnificent start and oh so nearly takes second place from Damon Hill. The conditions are atrocious Visibility is almost impossible, but still the race goes on and it's difficult for Damon Hill to get close to Schumacher because so much water is flying up from the car in front. Schumacher keeps it on the island, Heinz Harold Frensen doesn't and goes the long way round before rejoining the race. It's now raining harder than ever, cars are aquaplaning, overtaking is impossible and the race has degenerated into a damp and dangerous procession. Several cars fail to stay on the road, one of them Johnny Herbert in the second Benetton. Ukio Katayama hits the wall in the Tyrrell. And then Taki Inui gets it all wrong in the Simtek. Ultimately, the safety car has to come out. And the cars go round until it pulls off again. The rain is allegedly easing a little bit and the race is on once more still with Schumacher leading from Hill. Jean Alesi is third from Nigel Mansell. They've started a tremendous battle which will last the entire race, but Morbidelli has a big accident, wipes the front off the footwork. He hit the barrier very, very hard indeed, spinning down the grass verge like a top. Marshall went to his aid, only to be hit by Martin Brundle, who himself was sliding off the road. The marshal had nothing worse than a broken leg. He had a lucky escape. But now the red flag has to come out. The race is stopped. The drivers discuss the conditions. In the end, the race is restarted, but behind the safety car. The first time in Formula One history this has happened. As the rain continues to fall, there are processional laps behind the safety car before it finally pulls off and the race continues, still with Michael Schumacher leading, but then he comes in for his routine stop, and now Damon Hill goes in front. The race is being run on aggregate. It's become confusing, but Schumacher knows he's got to drive as hard as he knows on this very slippery circuit to have victory. And here's this battle for third place between Alesi and Mansell. Mansell trying one side, then the other. At speeds of up to 190 miles an hour in the rain, Mansell is determined to get by, Alesi is determined to keep the door shut. And Damon Hill drives on and takes victory, despite a tremendous challenge in the closing stages from Schumacher, who has to give best and finishes 3.3 seconds behind. A great victory for Hill, and that means that the teams go to Adelaide, the final round, with one point between Michael Schumacher and Damon Hill in this final race. The tension shows in both drivers' eyes. But it's Nigel Mansell who has pole after wet weather on Saturday. Mansell makes a bad start, Schumacher makes a good one. Damon Hill goes inside Mansell to take second place and the battle for the championship is on between Damon Hill in second place and Michael Schumacher in the lead, and the rest of the field are left behind and almost forgotten. In fact, Nigel Mansell has a torrid time behind Damon Hill. He holds third place for a bit, but gets untidily onto the curb. Past go Hakkinen and Barrichello, and he rejoins just in front of Berger. Damon Hill is on brilliant form and gradually starts to put pressure on Michael Schumacher. And it's under this pressure that finally, Michael Schumacher makes a significant mistake. First though, the mistake for Jean Alesi. He spins off and rejoins well done. 
Damon Hill and Michael Schumacher make their pit stops simultaneously and rejoin simultaneously, just in the same order. Still Schumacher first, Damon Hill second. Still the race on. As Mansell tries to go round Mika Hakkinen, manages it, but not for very long. Now the pressure is starting to tell on Schumacher, and as he goes into a left-hander, he makes a crucial mistake, hits the wall really hard. His car is crippled. He comes back onto the road. Damon Hill goes for the inside. Schumacher moves across in front of him, and the two cars collide. Damon Hill's front suspension is broken. He creeps back to the pits, hoping that the car can be mended. Schumacher, out of his car, wonders if he's lost the championship in that mistake. But Damon Hill knows as he sits in the pits that they can't mend that bent front suspension wishbone. Schumacher sees that Hill is not coming round. Hill is out of the car and gradually Schumacher comes to terms with the fact that he is the world champion as Damon Hill sits in his pit in despair. And all of that excitement leaves Nigel Mansell with the race. Mika Hakkinen out of the race in dramatic style to end a difficult season for McLaren. And after a battle with Gerhard Berger, Nigel Mansell romps home to take victory. Gerhard Berger is in second place. Martin Brundle's McLaren is third. Michael Schumacher is Formula One champion of the world. But even today, Ayrton Senna is the man that is remembered. For me, it was always clear that I not going to win the championship and it's Ayrton who is going to win the championship but he hasn't been there for the last races and I'd like to take this championship and give it to him because he is the driver who should have earned it, he had the best car, he was the best driver and uh, that's my feelings about him. It was difficult at the time to, to show my feelings because I'm not somebody who likes to show the feelings to, out, to the outside but uh, I always thought about it and it's, it's the right time now to, to give something which I, which I achieved, which he should have achieved, uh, to give it to him. 16 races, 9 long months, tragedy, controversy, excitement and drama. And at the end of the day, by one championship point, Damon Hill is beaten, Michael Schumacher is world champion. But there's always next year, and in 1995, the battle will commence again.